Hi, and welcome to this recording of XAM335, where we're going to talk about renderers in Xamarin Forms. My name is Kim Philpotts. You can always reach me via my email or my Twitter handle, but hopefully you've downloaded the class materials in order to complete today's class. So our goal today is to learn how to use native code to extend or create custom controls in Xamarin Forms. In previous Xamarin Forms classes, we learned how to use effects to customize the visualization of existing controls. Today, we're going to go beyond just the visualization. We're going to see how to customize behavior of existing controls and create entirely new controls that aren't currently defined in Xamarin Forms. We're going to start out by exploring a powerful and relatively new feature in Xamarin Forms, the ability to embed native controls directly into a Xamarin Forms defined UI. To do that, we'll first discuss the differences between controls defined in Xamarin Forms and native controls. And then we'll have a look at how we can bring natively defined controls to our shared layouts. So each mobile platform provides a very rich selection of native controls. And when we create a Xamarin Forms application, it's these native controls that are actually presenting our UI. This includes standard things like buttons and text blocks, along with the more specialized controls that are unique to a platform. And often these specialized controls can really help make an application stand out or feel more integrated. So if you have a look at the toolbox here on the screen, these are just some of the native controls available to Android developers. However, Xamarin Forms only exposes the most commonly used control types that are available on all of the supported platforms, which means that many of the native controls are not reachable using the API surface provided by Xamarin Forms. But there is good news. Xamarin Forms allows native controls on each platform to be added directly into a Xamarin Forms UI, which makes it very easy to bring in unique controls on a specific platform, such as an iOS segmented control. We can go and create this and add it to our Xamarin Forms layout. So why is this a big deal? On the Xamarin Forms side, we define our UI in a common abstract way using objects derived from the Xamarin Forms elements, or often the higher level Xamarin Forms view type. And the Xamarin Forms layouts are designed to hold objects of these types. On the native side, we're using native types, and the native views do not derive from Xamarin Forms. Or to put it another way, the shared layout elements and native controls are not type compatible. In order to add native controls into our Xamarin Forms UI, we need to somehow convert our native UI views to a compatible type. We can do this conversion using extension methods that are provided in Xamarin Forms. There's an add extension method that allows us to add a native control directly into a Xamarin Forms layer. This method does both the conversion and adds the native control to a layout in one step. There is also a two view extension method, which can be used to convert a native control to a Xamarin Forms view. And it's then up to you to add the control to your UI. However, this technique allows for greater flexibility, as we'll see shortly. Let's start with the add extension method. Xamarin Forms layouts have a children collection of type iList. The add extension method extends the iList collection and accepts a native base view type. This add method is defined for each platform. It accepts the correct base view type for the executing platform. So here we can see we have an Android implementation taking in an Android.views dot view type. Let's look at an example. Here we're adding a Windows UWP repeat button. This is a control that is unique to UWP and not defined in the Xamarin Forms API. We can instantiate the repeat button and then use the add extension method in our UWP head project to add it to a Xamarin Forms layout. In this case, we're adding it to a stack layout. This technique is very handy, but it is limited to layouts and it's not possible to set Xamarin Forms specific attached properties. For example, to specify something like a position within a grid. So what do we do if we want to set an attached property or assign a native control as content on a Xamarin Forms element, such as a page or a frame? The Xamarin Forms team has given us another set of extension methods that extend the native view type. The to view method is defined on each platform on the platform specific base view type and it returns a Xamarin Forms view. 
This return view can then be used like any other view defined in your Xamarin Forms shared code. And here's an example. We're creating an iOS detail disclosure button in the iOS head project. And then we're calling the to view extension method. The return Xamarin Forms view can then be assigned to the content property of the Xamarin Forms content view. Because the extension methods are platform specific, they can't be called within a PCL or a .NET standard library. They must be called from the platform specific projects. So one option is to define the UI in a shared project. We can then bring in the platform specific using statements using compiler directives, and then we can create and use the platform specific native control. Again, wrapping it in compiler directives. If you prefer to use a portable class library or a .NET standard library to define your Xamarin Forms UI, then you can use an abstraction to reach the platform specific code. For example, we could define an interface for a factory method, implement that interface on each platform that we want to support, and add the platform specific code. You can then use any pattern you like to reach the platform specific code, perhaps using something like the Xamarin Forms dependency service. If you'd like to know more about dependency abstraction patterns, I highly recommend attending some of our other classes like XAM250. It's now time for an exercise on adding a native control to a Xamarin Forms layout. So in this first section, we've talked about how we can define a native control and how we can add a native control to a Xamarin Forms layout. Next, we'll have a look at a technique we can use to extend existing controls with new features or visualizations. So first of all, we'll talk about how we can extend an existing renderer and how we can apply a customized renderer. Let's take a quick look at the Xamarin Forms rendering architecture. And we've seen this before in classes like Xam 120 and Xam 330. So we'll just do a bit of a review. But for most elements, we can customize the appearance of the generated control by setting some properties. And where possible, the platform controls will be adjusted to respect the property values. You can think of these elements as platform independent models, which represent the controls we actually want to generate at runtime. And Xamarin Forms will take our element definition and turn it into a native control. For example, our button element would turn into an android.widget.button on Android, a UIKit.UI button on iOS, and a Windows UI XAML controls button on Windows. The code that does this is called a platform renderer. Each element you work with in Xamarin Forms has a unique renderer assigned to it that takes your element instance and creates a unique platform specific native control to represent it on the screen. And of course, these renderers are by their very nature platform specific. So here you can see we have a unique renderer object defined for each of our supported platforms. Xamarin Forms includes a renderer for each visual element on each supported platform. You can see a small selection of those renderers here. There's a couple of important things to note though. The naming of the renderers are almost always the same on each platform, and the renderers are often named by simply adding the word renderer to the end of the element name. Of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes the name is simplified, as is the case for a content page or a content view. The renderers for those are simply a page renderer and a view renderer. By using this consistency, it makes it easier to discover the renderers for each Xamarin Forms element. And there is also a comprehensive list of available renderers over at the documentation site. Xamarin Forms provides a powerful but limited API surface to customize your UIs. We can see a partial definition for a Xamarin Forms button on the left. It allows us to set some basic color properties, for example. However, the native views have substantially more customizations points. So if we have a look at the Android button, it has properties for additional button types and states that aren't reachable from a Xamarin Forms definition. So we can use customized platform specific renderers to access properties on the native control that aren't reachable using the Xamarin Forms API. For example, we could use the iOS UI kit API to add a drop shadow to a button, something which isn't currently possible from Xamarin Forms. In order to do the customization, we need to create a new renderer that extends the existing renderer. So in this case, that would be a button renderer. There are several steps we need to complete to create and apply a customized renderer. First, we would subclass the Xamarin Forms element to create a unique element. We subclass the platform specific renderer and adjust properties on the native control. And we export 
the renderer so that the custom renderer is used for our derived element. Now do keep in mind that steps two and three are platform specific, and so they will need to be repeated for each platform you wish to support. So we'll start out by subclassing the Xamarin Forms element in our shared code. No additional customization is needed, as we'll see a little bit later on, and we can add new properties if we choose. But often, all we need to do is create the derived class. Then, in the head projects for each platform, we'll subclass the renderer for the base element. It's common to use the same class name for each platform, but it's not required. You notice that the namespaces for the renderers are different on each platform, so the renderer is provided by the platform-specific Xamarin Forms NuGet package. Our custom renderer has two primary tasks. It needs to create the native control, and it needs to apply the customizations to the native control. So for example, on iOS, our render would go and create the UI button and apply the drop shadow. In the derive renderer for each platform, you'll need to override on element changed. This is the most important method in your renderer. It tells you when the render has received a new Xamarin Forms element. And this is where the native control is created and customized. Because we're deriving from an existing renderer, we'll have the base renderer create the correct native control. Then call to the base on element change creates the native control. So don't forget to call the base implementation. Once the native control has been created, it can then be reached through the renderer's control property. The control property is strongly typed. So for example, in our iOS button renderer, control will be of type UI button and it will expose all the methods, properties, and events of a UI kit UI button. And we can now use the control property to customize the appearance and the behavior using the native APIs. So here we're setting the shadow opacity, for example. The last step is to associate the renderer with the element defined in our shared code. To do this, we use the export renderer assembly level attributes. Though this is commonly above the platform specific renderer, and this is what maps the renderer to the Xamarin Forms element. The first parameter is the Xamarin Forms element type, in this case, our derived button type. And the second is the type of the platform specific renderer. So this is the only way to associate a renderer with the Xamarin Forms element. And if you don't do this, or if you're missing your custom renderer, it won't be used and it will fall back to the base renderer. It is possible to apply a renderer to a default Xamarin Forms type. So for example, we could use button instead of my button. This would use your custom renderer in place of the default renderer for all buttons. And you would no longer be able to use the default. So it's best practice to always use a derived element which gives us the flexibility to use either the custom or the default renderer, and it will make it easier to introduce another renderer for a similar type in the future. Then we can go ahead and use our custom element. So in C-sharp, you would instantiate the element and add it to your visual tree. In XAML, you'd bring the XAML namespace in and add your custom type. It's now time for another exercise, this time creating a hyperlink label renderer. So in this section, we talked about extending existing renderers, which is a very powerful technique, but it's largely been superseded by Xamarin Forms effects. So if you're only changing the visualization, effects are the recommended approach, although it's perfectly valid to use a renderer. If you're changing behavior, then renderers are recommended. Where renderers really shine is when you want to define a completely new element type in Xamarin Forms. So in this section, we'll create a custom element and then create the platform specific renderers to visualize a new type. Xamarin Forms is great, but it doesn't encapsulate every control type. It's very likely you'll reach the limits of the provided Xamarin Forms elements and decide you have to define your own. For example, if we look at the gauge or the speedometer control that we have here, can you think of an existing Xamarin Forms element that would be appropriate to extend to create this visualization? Probably not. And as well as that, we have to think about what public properties or events you'd expect this sort of type to have. So we've got two ways to create custom elements in Xamarin Forms. We can derive from an existing element such as a button or a label, or we can derive from a view which is more of a blank slate type of approach. Deriving from a view means you'll be defining all of the properties and events for your control. And this is actually the preferred approach for custom controls that don't mirror any of the provided Xamarin Forms elements. So just like we did with the previous section, we start off by defining a new element in our shared code. 
And since our gauge example doesn't fit into any of the existing elements, we'll derive from view. And here we can define custom properties for our new element. So for this, it's recommended to use bindable properties. And as we'll see later on, this allows us to respond to property changes from within the renderer, which will make it easier to keep the element and the native control in sync as well. It's time for another exercise. This one is about creating a custom control. Creating a custom control in Xamarin Forms means creating or adding platform specific code on each supported platform. Technically, this code could go into the renderer, but really the renderer architecture is designed to consume standalone controls on each platform. So the recommended approach is to create custom controls following the patterns and best practice for each platform. Also, creating a standalone control means that it can be used with a traditional Xamarin native project as well. And we're not going to cover off all of the platform specific details here. The platform specific Xamarin University courses and the developer portal are really, really good resources. So I highly recommend you go and check those out. The next step is to create the renderer on each platform. So if our element derives from view, our renderer will derive from view renderer. So you notice that it has a very straightforward naming convention. View renderer is generic and we need to specify our Xamarin Forms view derived type as well as the native view, which will represent the element. So this will be our custom view. Specifying the view type here makes the renderer's control property strongly typed, which simplifies reaching the native view's properties and methods in our renderer. And again, we assign the renderer's native control in the onElementChange method. When deriving from view renderer, we need to explicitly set the native control. So first, we instantiate the instance of the control, and then we assign it using the set native control method. The on element change method is typically only called once. However, the Xamarin Forms team doesn't guarantee this because Xamarin Forms may reuse renderers in specific circumstances. For example, when using a renderer for a list view cell. And because on element changed may be called more than once, you should always guard against calling set native control multiple times. So you want to check and see if the control property is null first, and that'll just make sure that the native control is only assigned once. The renderer also provides access to the instance of the Xamarin Forms element via the element property. And again, the element is strongly typed and it will match the type set in your class signature. We can also respond to property changes on the Xamarin Forms element. So if your custom element defined bindable properties, when those properties are changed, we can get notified by overriding on element property changed in the renderer. This method is going to be called when the property is changed and it's going to be passed a property changed event args. And inside of the property changed event args, we have a property called property name. And this of course is the name of the property that's been changed. We would then access the updated property on the element and apply any changes to the native control. It's time for another exercise, this time creating a renderer for a custom control. In this section, we talked about creating our own custom element and creating the renderers for it on the platform as well. In our final section, we'll look at techniques for sending notifications between the renderer and the Xamarin Forms element. So first we'll talk about sending information from the renderer to the element, and then we'll talk about sending information from the element to the renderer. So often when we are extending existing controls or we're defining custom controls, we need to send notifications between the shared Xamarin Forms definition and the platform specific renderers. And we want to do this without creating strong references between the element and the renderer that can get in the way of the garbage collector and possibly cause memory leaks. Let's start by looking at the case where the platform renderer needs to notify the shared code. So the user interacts with the platform specific control presented by the renderer. It might be just something as simple as a user tapping on it, or it could be more complex interactions or gestures. The renderer needs to send a notification to the shared code and the shared code responds maybe by updating some other part of the UI or whatever it needs to do. We'll start on the platform specific side. In our renderer, after we create the native control, we can subscribe to events on the native control. So in this example here, it's just a simple tap. 
And since we have access to the XamarinForms element, we can create a new method on the element and call it from the renderer. After that, you can update the XamarinForms side however you want to. So a useful strategy is to create a public event in the element so that other parts of the shared code can be notified of that as well. And we could stop our conversation there, but there's a small problem with our implementation. Creating a public method on the element satisfies our requirement to be able to raise it from the renderer. Unfortunately, that method is now visible to any code that has a reference to an instance of the XamarinForms element. Looking at the issue from a code perspective, making the method public allows it to be called from anywhere, but we want it to only be called in the renderer. So it doesn't make sense to call it in other parts of our shared code. And this can cause some confusions for developers, or it might cause unexpected behavior if it's called. The way the XamarinForms team solves this problem is using a controller interface. The interface defines any methods that need to be called by the renderer, and that shouldn't be easily discoverable in other parts of the code. We then explicitly implement the interface in the custom element. And by explicitly implementing these methods, it forces us to remove the public keyword, which makes the method less discoverable. We can still call the explicit implemented method in the renderer, but it must be called using a reference to the controller interface. It's also very common to send runtime changes to the renderer. As an example, a user may interact with a control that we want to use to change another control's color or enabled state. So we need to send a notification to the renderer and then respond to that notification, probably by doing something like updating the native control. And this should sound very familiar. This is exactly what we did in the previous section when we defined a bindable property on the element and responded to property changes in the renderer. For scenarios where bindable properties don't make sense, such as resetting or restoring state or passing multiple parameters, we can use another technique such as a messaging service. And of course, there's other ways to solve this problem, but we need to be careful not to create strong references between the element and the renderer. And so the XamarinForms Messaging Center is a pretty good choice here. Also remember that bindable properties are the preferred solution to notify the renderer unless a specific method call is required. So for example, it doesn't make sense to set a property if you need to perform a complex action. So you may be restoring state that requires setting multiple properties or some sort of data management. Using the messaging center allows us to send notifications to the platform specific renderers without tightly coupling the renderer instance to the element. We're not going to go into the details of using the messaging center because we cover it in other classes, but a fairly common pattern here is to create a public method on the custom XamarinForms element. And this time we expect this method to be called from the shareable code. And this method sends a notification using the messaging center. And then in the renderer, we subscribe to the message to respond however we need to, most likely by setting properties or calling methods on the native control. It is possible that you may have multiple instances of a custom control. So in our gauge example, we could have one which is a speedometer and one which is a fuel gauge. So we need to make sure that we're responding to the messages sent by the correct instance of the element. So the XamarinForms Messaging Center provides the sender with the message. So in our case, the sender will be the instance of the element that sent the message. And because the renderer already knows about the element, we can compare the message sender to the element property to ensure receiving messages from the correct instance. And very importantly, don't forget to clean up. The XamarinForms renderer base classes implement iDisposable. So if you need to do any cleanup or unsubscribing to events or messages, you should override the dispose and you should do it here. And now it's time for another exercise, this time communicating between the renderer and the shared element. In this last section, we've had a look at how we send information from the renderer to the element and how we send information from the element to the renderer. If you want to go deeper into the rendering architecture, the XamarinForms source code is actually a very, very good resource because the code is all open sourced and available on GitHub. 
So spending a couple of hours having a look through the source code will give you some really excellent insights on how the Xamarin Forms team manages renderers and solve some of their common problems as well. And that's it for this class. Hopefully you've found some useful information about implementing renderers in your own applications. So thanks for watching and see you later.